show on the sports right here with Tom Loeffler. Man, um, the face off, the first one of the week, I <laughs> got a little, I don't know, it, it was tense, but it was still like, I think it's just time for business, right? It's civil now. Uh, definitely a lot of tension there, especially on the, trip, on the uh, Canelo side. But it's good to see them uh, face off. Uh, anytime there's a Triple G Canelo fight up here in Las Vegas, it's a huge event. You know, we had the, the third highest gate in boxing history in the first fight, and uh, you know these, these guys they bring out global fan bases, you know, and it's, it's a huge event. Uh, it, it's tense up there, but they know uh, at least Triple G knows it's business. You know, it's a it's a business, it's a sport. Good to see you. Uh, it's a it's a it's a sport uh, for him, and and uh, I think he has to prove in the third fight that I take it out of the judges' hands. You know, uh, I was saying before in an interview that you know Canelo always seems to get two points his way regardless of whether it's a people fight a triple G fight whatever it is up in here in Las Vegas and that's why he likes fighting up here I, I don't blame him but you know I hopefully the judges don't score every close round for Canelo like they have in the in the past and and the best result would be at 168 if, if triple G can take it out of the judges hands and uh, and end it with a uh, with a stoppage and then we won't have to worry about the judges I was gonna ask what what does triple G have to do to, to make <laughs> to sure win a decision <laughs> Get out of the judges is, is 168 pound Triple G I've, uh, uh, bringing the power up with him. I've, I've been wondering that over the first two fights. What does Triple G have to do to win a decision? in Las Vegas uh, against Canelo, but, you know, look, he's very strong at a great training camp. He's training with Jonathan Banks, his whole team, Chris Camacho, James, uh, who, who does, uh, the, who's the chef, and uh, just everyone on his team has, has worked out really well. And uh, he, he's in really good shape, even though he's 40, and, and, and anyone that turns 40 is not the same as being 20 or 30, but if anyone can do it at 40, Triple G can do it. Um, He's always lived very clean. He never hangs out, doesn't drink alcohol, anything like that. Always a good family man. So at 40 and at 168, which is going to be a stronger weight for Triple G, I think you'll see uh, an even stronger Triple G. Is there any, just being the history with your guys' fights, uh, Triple G versus Canelo, is there any um, different drug testing involved other than the standard kind of WBC one and the one that the Nevada does? Well, we've had the, the same in the past with Nevada. Nevada is, uh, is involved, and then uh, Nevada Commission uh, has their, uh, their testing as well. Uh, Nevada is what had suspended uh, Canelo in that second fight. So uh, we, we have faith in them and, and uh, you know, the testing that's led up to, uh, to this fight. Triple G's come off a, a, a good performance against Murata in Japan, unified the titles over there, and Canelo's coming off of a loss. So if you look at all the factors involved, even though uh, Triple G turned 40 and Canelo waited until he, he turned 40, I still think that uh, you know Triple G has momentum and, and the motivation to try to make right those uh, judges scorecards in the first two fights. What does G Triple G take from the Bilbao fight that he can implement into this third fight with Canelo? Well, uh, you know, Triple G, I think, put the, the blueprint out there in the first fight, how to beat Canelo. <laughs> you know, HBO, who's neutral, uh, scored it 8-4. to four. For Triple G, and, and that, that's how I had, had it scored, so it didn't seem like it should have been a controversial decision. And even with eight rounds, he still came away with a draw. And uh, one judge even gave ten rounds to Canelo, which was, I, I don't know if there, there has ever been an explanation uh, for that. But, um, you know, not dwelling on the past, it's just uh, Triple G has to make a big impression on the uh, judges' scorecards. I think Bevo did a great job in pushing Canelo back, landing landing clear punches when uh, Canelo was against the rope. Bevo was, you gotta give him credit, he was very accurate. He had the long punches and, and he made uh, Canelo go backwards. And I think uh, he probably looked at the first fight with Triple G and Canelo and then Triple G can look at that fight with uh, Bevo since that was uh, Canelo's last fight and he has to do something similar. He has to push uh, Canelo back and uh, land uh, clean punches. You know, the thing with the, the Triple G and Canelo fights, it was such a, such a high boxing IQ where Triple G landed a lot of inside shots and short shots that the judges might not have somehow conveniently uh, missed, but, you know, Bevo landed pretty big shots, which, you know, would be hard to uh, to miss, and uh, and that's how I think he was able to get the uh, decision in, in that last fight. Do 
Canelo and Triple G, you know, when the Hall of Fame calls in like, you know, 10, 15 years or whatever it is, do they bury the hatchet after all this and kind of Barrera Morales style or are they kind of maybe Hagrid Leonard, maybe like not I, I really liking each other for as long as, as long as time, as long as time it is? I don't know if they'll ever be friends, but uh, look, you know, both guys have accomplished a tremendous amount in their careers. Uh, both guys need each other to put these type of big fights on. Uh, you know, we did over a million pay-per-view buys for the first two fights, and so Canelo needs Triple G for those numbers, and Triple G needs Canelo for those numbers, and also for the ticket sales. You know, especially Triple G being such a global star, you know, international and TV and things of that nature, so they definitely complement each other and their two different fan bases. So, uh, like I said, I don't know if they'll be friends, but uh, I think uh, Triple G respects what Canelo's accomplished in the ring. Um, and, you know, at some point, I would imagine when there's no Triple G fights on the, the table for Canelo, he probably will do the same. But, you know, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. You know, I've been with uh, with Ray Leonard and with Hagler, and, and they've come to terms. And even, you know, with Ali and, and when he come, you know, came to terms with uh, Joe Frazier and Foreman. And, you know, so hopefully uh, that's, you know, like you said, 10, 15 years down the road. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, <clears throat> we'll see. You never know how that how that turns out. Tom, thank you so much for the time, man. Tell the fans that where they can follow you and also uh, follow 360 uh, shows that are coming up. Callum's fighting again, right? Yeah, Callum Walsh is fighting uh, November 3. We just announced his opponent today, Dylan Parsley, who's 13-1. Uh, and 1. So you have a 4-0 Callum Walsh going up against a 13-1 fighter. So we're excited about that. It'll be Callum's first eight-round fight. Um, and then don't uh, don't forget, on the undercard here, this is a great pay-per-view show coming up on Saturday night. You know, Eddie put together the Bam Rodriguez fight as a co-feature. That's great. He's become uh, a fan favorite. And then, you know, with Triple G Promotions, Ali Akhmedov fighting Gabe Rosado, who's also a name linked to Triple G. And Gabe's been in a lot of wars, a lot of great fights, world title fights. He just beat Beck the Bully uh, coming off a win there. So uh, he could easily be a spoiler for some of these young guys coming up. Uh, um, Ali Akhmedov trained with Triple G. He trained with Jonathan Banks, had the same training team, so we expect great things from Ali. And this could be a huge launching pad, uh, launching platform for uh, his career as well. Can't wait to see you, man. Thank yeah. you so much, Tom. Appreciate you. Thanks, Steve.